Um, my talk today uh, will be about uh, an activity called Turla. Uh, it's a threat, targeted threat actor that I've been fighting with uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, I'm not going to present anything new, really new today that uh, was uh, done, uh, was already published uh, publicly. Uh, the goal of the presentation is more to uh, review all this uh, information that has been available publicly, and there is a, a lot of them, and sort of try, try to get out a bigger picture out of all this stuff. And uh, the name of the presentation is Development and Operations, because uh, I think we should uh, separate these two, and I'll explain uh, why later on. So let's start. It's a quick, quick agenda, introduction, the two parts, and then I'll tell about how to protect or how to try to protect against, against, against this, and uh, some speculations about attribution. So let's start. Uh, first, I, uh, I'm going to give you some uh, perspective, uh, yeah, my perspective uh, with, um, about the contact with this uh, threat actor or activity or whatever. It all starts with the famous post uh, in 2008 that, call, that is called Threat That Hit Pentagon. It's a post uh, uh, published on Threat Expert blog by uh, Sergei Shevchenko. And he describes, uh, he's also an author of the BAE Systems report from this year, which is also a very good report. I will come back to this one. But on that uh, blog post, he, he explains, um, he publishes an analysis of a malware that is able to cross the air gaps. So it's able to steal data from uh, networks that are not connected to the internet and is able to use a, a USB pen drive uh, for that. And he also explains that uh, he's probably missing some of the components of the malware. It's like it's a bigger thing because there are some files that are, that are created that he doesn't know how to explain what they are for. So in 2009, I have analyzed an incident connected to Agent BTZ, and I have I've been able to find these uh, missing components uh, that uh, Agent BTZ was using, and indeed it was a bigger tool. It turned out to be a bigger toolkit with rootkit and stuff. So really interesting to analyze. Um, it in 2011, uh, uh, me. Uh, Matthew Kaczmarek, uh, also known as TechMac, and some other researchers, we, got, we have gathered together to analyze uh, something that looked really sophisticated. It was a, a, a strange rootkit found on one of the uh, networks uh, in Europe. And um, at the beginning, we didn't know that it's connected to Agent BTZ. It, it turned out that it, it was connected later on uh, in the course of the, the analysis. Uh, beginning 2013, um, so this um, uh, rootkit has reappeared a few times uh, in Europe in different places and we decided that it's uh, worth to prepare a document uh, to raise awareness and to distribute these documents, uh, this document, the report from the analysis with uh, how to detect also and stuff like that um, to different trusted circles. Um, uh, Sert Polska was also sent, uh, I also sent uh, this document to, uh, to Piotr. Um, so, big thing, beginning 2014, February, uh, G-Data uh, publishes uh, first public information about, about Snake. And it starts a series of disclosure. Uh, it's followed by the BAE Systems Report. Uh, made by Sergey, and very good, uh, he's a very good reverser, so the, the, the analysis is really good. Uh, so that's more or less how, how I'm from the, uh, that's more or less snake form from my perspective, and now we are going to have a look about all this information that has been pub uh, published uh, publicly. Um, so the, the blog post that I mentioned, then, 2013, there is an interesting blog post uh, of Trend Micro. At that time, uh, it wasn't Snake wasn't public. Then um, we didn't know that it's connected, that it might be connected to Snake. Uh, 
neither turn micro new. Um, I'll come back to this one. This is this actually describes the, something that is that I call the, the first stage backdoor um, uh, that is connected with Snake, but it's not uh, the same tool. It's a simpler backdoor. So GData starts the series of disclosures. BAE Systems follows with their report. It's like every security company had something about uh, about Snake, but it was not public, which is just that G-Data has just started started an avalanche of uh, of reports. Uh, so every security vendor um, uh, must have published something just to show that they know about it. So we have decided to publish our report uh, too, because we decided that in in these circumstances it's better to publish it. Maybe someone will benefit from this more. There are two uh, reports on the exploit exploitation part of uh, of this uh, attack. So this is about exploit Snake uses to to circumvent some protections in Windows. I'll come back to that. Um, on kernel mode.info, there is uh, uh, a couple of threads, interest, very interesting threads on on that. Uh, also, the technical discussion of uh, patch patch guard bypass in 64-bit uh, Windows. Circle has published an analysis about an older version of, of Turla, which I don't call Snake. Um, Symantec has a blog, interesting blog post about some geopolitical um, context about uh, on all these attacks. And last but not least, Kaspersky has published uh, an analysis on uh, the, exp the the water uh, the water holding. Uh, um, infection attack, uh, attacks and uh, also about the first stage backdoor, the same that was described by Trend, Trend Micro in 2013. So the first problem with all these reports is uh, that there is a lot of names and a lot of confusion because, because each report uh, uses a certain name uh, in a different context. And uh, it's, it's really confusing to, to read. Uh, so uh, I'll try uh, to somehow um, sort it, uh, all these names, but I haven't finished my research yet. It turns out that uh, there is a lot of variants of this uh, rootkit and uh, it requires a lot of work. So let me start about the first uh, part, development. Um, basically, I, sp I split it into development in and operations because I think that... Uh, it's, it is just a tool that is developed and sold to some organizations that operate that tool, and that, you know, as such, it should be uh, it should be um, analyzed separately. So, what is Turla? Well, for me, Turla is uh, a family of a related, a very, a sophisticated backdoor software. A name comes from a Microsoft detection signature, an old detection signature, and in, it's it's an anagram of the word Ultra, because Ultra 3 was was a name of a fake service that one of Snake versions was using. Yeah, they all are related by uh, shared code, and here I I, I distinguish uh, three. Um, uh, three main uh, like uh, revisions or uh, variants of Snake that are that are all three are still in use and they are probably still developed maybe in independently. Uh, Agent BTZ uh, that is the simple simplest of all three backdoors uh, and then uh, Snake is the is the most sophisticated and I, I tried to to throw in all these names uh, to put it in the right uh, the right three. But as I said. Um, I think there is uh, more research needed here because there is really a lot of uh, a lot of the, all these variants there. This is a quick summary of uh, how they are different. Um, so, for example, as you can see, uh, storage here. Um, this is a functionality that provides the operator to to have a like a hidden directory where he can operate, collect some files. Agent BTZ. It was it, it uses just a hidden folder. It hides the the folder in the in the kernel. But pf and snake, 
they use an, an encrypted container. So it, there is a file also hidden in the file system and it's encrypted and it's uh, somehow mounted in, inside the system. So it's uh, more com sophisticated. It's actually not really, it's not the first uh, rootkit that has been using this because we have uh, TDSS and uh, I think Rovnix was also using that kind of uh, mechanism, but it's, it's it's going into this direction. All these uh, um, root kits and cyber espionage toolkits, they have these encrypted containers somewhere. This is what I can see. Configuration has changed from a hard-coded values through text uh, file to a um, key value store. Networking also, this functionality is, is uh, implemented, for example, in Snake in a very, uh, in a very different way than, than the two previous rootkits. I will show you why, and because that implementation is quite uh, interesting. So let's let's have a look at uh, interesting feature and techniques that are employed by this rootkit. The first one here it's. Uh, it's this virtual box exploit to load uh, to circumvent this, the, the driver signing enforcement in Windows 64-bit. How does this work? Very interesting. It, they use an old uh, virtual box driver that has a vulnerabi vulnerability that, that allows to execute um, the, the kernel mode code. Um, and um, this vulnerability is old, right? It's patched, but the driver is still signed and it's 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 it it's still possible to use this driver to to load the kernel mode code so i'm asking uh, what is this driver enforcement for if there is a uh, old driver with correct uh, signature still there and can be used to load the code i this is this is something strange but yeah it's 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 well described in three uh, in uh, at least three different posts here as you can see Another feature, interesting feature, is the use of uh, the open source uh, UDIS 86 disassembler to to manipulate uh, the code and kernel structures, uh, things like that, and patch uh, different stuff. So, here, for example, interesting uh, functionality that they need. Um, Windows provides a function called X get a previous mode, which is getting some value. Uh, at certain offset, this offset is not documented, and and what they need in inside the rootkit is that they need to set this value at that offset. So what they do is they disassemble the the get previous mode function, they extract the offset from the disassemble listing, and and then then they just assemble the set previous mode function that doesn't exist. We called it like that, and and that's it. I think it's 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 pretty cool. Um, hooking engine is also uh, implemented using the disassembler. They disassemble the first six bytes of a hooked function and they change the relative offsets into absolute offsets. The interesting thing is how they do uh, the hooking bypass because the, the hooking is just made for, not for the rootkit, but for the, the rest of the world. R the rootkit, when it calls the hooked function, it does not need to be hooked. So what they do is they, uh, in case of the Cisco, Hooking is they they also disassemble the the Cisco gate function, and they extract the number of the Cisco, and then they they call this Cisco directly bypassing the the, the official gate uh, uh, function. Again, this all proves that uh, these guys that wrote this uh, are real experts, maybe world class experts in kernel um, internals in Windows kernel internals. Because this is most, you know, like they use an un undocumented functionality, un undocumented functions. This is so. From this perspective, it's also interesting to analyze this. Um, another feature is this encrypted VFS that I was already uh, telling you about. Uh, it's this container where they can operate and store files. It's, it's normally hard to find if you don't know about it. Um, yeah, it's implemented also uh, on a sector level. There is a hook that uh, hooks the read sector reading and sector write function, and is uh, and is pushing um, requests to a linked list. And another thread that is actually um, on that slide is picking up this uh, decryption or encryption requests, and is uh, decry uh, decrypting or encrypting sectors, and is 
uh, releasing back the control to Windows. So Windows doesn't know that it's something like this is there. This is very clean, very smart implementation also. Uh, how maybe more interesting is how, how does this uh, work in the, in the on the real system. So the, the encrypted container is hidden in a directory like this. These uh, numbers there, uh, the six numbers, are randomly generated uh, by the dropper of Turla. And the container is called hotfix.dat. It's, it's, it's hidden, uh, also hidden in the system by a classic technique of hiding. And um, if you want to access it, you need to use this notation, like backslash backslash dot hd1 dot backslash backslash, and then uh, hd1 is the hidden partition. Um, and then on my test uh, VM, uh, you can, if I do a dir, you can see tools, some tools that they store there, and uh, the queue, which is a configuration file for the rootkit, I will speak about this later. And on the second um, listing, you there is, they also implement another storage, uh, which is um, not permanent, but volatile. It's not mapped to any file. It will disappear after reboot. It's like a slash TMP in, in Unix. Uh, so configuration mechanism also evolved over these versions. Uh, Agent BTZ, all the configs were basically hard coded in the exes, uh, executables. Uh, PFI net has a, a configuration file stored on this VFS. It's a text file. Uh, network is or transports. I call it transports because they call it like this. Uh, network is uh, networking is implemented in the user mode. And the pay, user mode payload that are injected from the kernel are embedded in the rootkit body. Snake changes it uh, uh, further. Uh, they use this Q file that you, you could see. Uh, this, is, uh, this is basically a key value store of a configuration values. And the, the user land payloads also are stored there. And the network configuration. Why did they change it? I think uh, because Snake. Uh, uh, version of this family is uh, implementing a lot of stuff in, inside the kernel, uh, like the, the networking, for example. And I think kernels don't like to read text files or something like that. They they rather prefer, um, you know, like a more machine friendly um, structures, like, uh, for example, the binary key value store or something like that. But it's a theory. So. Let us look at this uh, modular transport functionality that uh, Snake implements. It's just that uh, s uh, version uh, uh, which I call Snake, and in the BAE system, its uh, report is called uh, a kernel-centric Snake. Yeah, kernel-centric Snake. So they have different basic blocks that implement some basic functionalities, and these blocks can be connected as, as uh, you know, like a Lego blocks. So you can you have a type two uh, blocks that, for example, implement encryption, fragmentation, and defragmentation over fragmented data, reliability. Some of them interface are interfaces to the like to the to the network and to the system, you know. And you can, for example, you ha you you have certain rules. For example, you can connect DOMC with uh, an orange object because it it has the, this orange. Uh, Ending, and f f here DOMC is a dom uh, named pipe client abstraction. DOMS is a named pipe server abstraction. So if you connect this with a named pipe, you will have a named pipe client. Basically, again, very elegant. Um, so this is how the how it's uh, configured. They specify in the configuration file eng dot frag dot np, and uh, it's connected. Um, this particular um, transport is used inside the HTTP. A legitimate HTTP requests. I will show you how this is used. Another example is a simple um, named pipe client. This is a named pipe server that implements also encryption, reliability, and fragmentation. Maybe they use this one over datagram channels so that they have to maintain certain uh, stuff like reliability themselves. Uh, you know, certain are implemented in ser in server mode, in certain in user mode. It uh, they talk to each other, they talk to each other uh, on the network also, and and yeah, this is this is uh, this is how the content is structured. But where is it now? Where is it uh, tunneled? Where is it? Uh, where do they pass it on the network? 
They have a lot of protocols to use also. So there is a number of datagram protocols. The interesting one is uh, the one that is uh, below the IP la uh, layer. Uh, I don't know why would they use this one. Someone told me that it's maybe to bypass some ra routers that do some filtering, but I don't know. So this one, they they, these ones they would probably use between different instances of Snake on a, on a, on, on a victim's network, but the stream channels uh, they would use to communicate to the remote operator from an instance that is probably somewhere on the DMZ or something like that. So uh, I can I, sh I will show you uh, an example of two uh, stream cover channels, uh, how it works. One is the SMTP cover channel. So in this case, Snag is sitting on a on a real uh, SMTP server. It 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 does not open a port or something like that, like a classical backdoor. You know, it sits on a real uh, like an exchange server, for example, most most often. And the operators, when they connect, they have to speak. SMTP, uh, so they connect, they say hello to the real server, the server responds, um, then um, they say mail from, you know, they follow the, the, the SMTP, uh, and then on RCP2, RCP2 uh, they have to, they, there is a, some secret um, trigger that uh, Snake is listening on this conversation and he will pick it up, so if if the if the, the 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 user part of the email is 10 characters long and if the last two characters characters matches this formula there uh, snake will uh, take over this connection and uh, yeah the real SMTP server can forget it about it can forget this <laughs> so uh in they can send commands in the data part of this um uh, HTTP cover channel is similar. It sits on the uh, HTTP server and it sends this uh, trigger on, on uh, in the HTTP header. There is some more checking on this one. I don't know why, but they do some more checking. Uh, interesting stuff is that you won't see uh, this connection in the logs. So because um, Snake will take over this. It is watching this connection, and it, it will hook it. Uh, it will not pass it to the HTTP server. So you will see every other connection in 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 the log files of your HTTP server, but not this one. That's why it's kind of difficult to analyze. It 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 poses some challenges. Let's say, plain snort signatures again difficult to create because you would have to calculate something. But I think it's possible to use Suricata and use Lua language there to to you know to like to to match the same formula, basically. Big picture of compromised network. I reconstructed this from a reversing. Uh, uh, in the future, I figured out that I was more or less right. They have different instances of Snake on the compromised network. Some of them, they talk between each other using channels that are more land friendly. And then there will be one that is talking to the the, like an exit node that is talking to the remote operator. So who is developing this? Uh, there are some uh, samples in the in the public that um, contain uh, the strings from the version control systems. Uh, I don't know why they are there, but maybe by mistake. And you can see here that there are some um, user names or nicknames of developer, Vlad, Gilk, and Ulrich. Uh, who are they? There is uh, some uh, post by uh, the kernelmode.info moderator. Uh, I originally was speculating that this is, it's, it's like a company that sells this, but here he says that it's a bunch of freelancers, freelancers that is selling it to a, different government to to do various kind of es espionage basically i think the guy is uh, he has a, a quite strong reputation so maybe he's right i don't know uh yeah yeah he's yeah he's saying some bad things about vae systems maybe he was pissed at them or something but yeah <laughs> okay and um that was quickly about the tool itself. And now let's let's have a look at uh, those who use it and how they use it. So first thing is that um, in the community, we uh, there is often people that uh, say 
yeah, this is a Turla group, but I'm asking if 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 this guy is right that they sell it to different people, uh, there might be many Turla groups, and which Turla group are we talking about? That's that's one question that I'm asking myself. I don't know myself, but I think it's it's it, it is a valid question. And also Turla, if we speak about tool, because we don't know again if Turla refers to these guys who operate it or to the tool itself, but if you refer it to the to the tool, this is just one of the tools they use. They use a lot of tools. Um, well, they, the, these groups that I know about, uh, that I have investigated, uh, there, there was a lot of tools used. Um, there is, however, some uh, uh, common, I, a lot, maybe it's not a good uh, expression here, some common things between all these attacks that, that, that I saw. You know, the tool is quite ex in, impressive uh, in the way they, they coded it, but um, the operators uh, sometimes they, 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 they tend to be really, really sloppy, the ones that use these, these tools. I will show you one example of uh, what uh, mistakes they did. So, what are the countries of interest? Based on the BAE systems report, it's um, um, Europe and more concretely, uh, East, Central and Eastern Europe. Strangely, Poland is not there. I don't know why. Maybe they just didn't submit anything to VirusTotal, which is good, because th this is based on the VirusTotal submitters, uh, submitter countries. That um, publicly, there are some publicly known victims. Pentagon is of, of, of obviously the, the first one. Finland, Sweden, uh, Belgium, this is all I found publicly. And um, uh, the operation that they perform is uh, like a staged, staged operation, of course. They, it's not like they come and install Turla. There is more, uh, more stages. So the first stage is that they have to compromise the first, the first, like first machine or first victim. Then they, they will install the, the initial backdoor, a simple reconnaissance backdoor. Then they have to, um, to, to go to other machines and maybe gain some more credentials uh, until, they find, uh, they, until, they, until they will get a domain user, domain admin, basically. And then when the network is fully compromised, they will choose which servers they will drop to on if they are interested to stay on these networks because they might decide to pull out or something like that. So I will now walk through a little bit on um, through all these stages to explain how how it might how the, how they do this or how they might be doing this. Some some of it is speculations, but yeah. Stage zero is the infection vector. How they attack you? Um, they use the traditional uh, spear phishing emails. That's the first at the first infection vector, uh, with which with kind of interesting exploits. Which is the second one that is the the privilege elevation exploit that is for Windows XP and it's in it's injecting kernel mode code. That's why it's interesting. So some things that are not typical are there too. A watering hose is uh, the one, um, the infection uh, method that was described by Kaspersky. Uh, also kind of interesting, um, they will use all the exploits for Java or some um, social engineering there. And also, uh, I've heard um, they might go for a third party supplier uh, to jump to your network, for example. If you're a bigger organization, you have some suppliers that are less protected. Uh, I advise to pay attention to this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they, they almost know they are not using zero days. Almost no, because that privilege escalation was at that time zero day. But if you if you take the two exploits together, it wasn't really a zero day because the previous one was the Adobe Reader exploit wasn't a zero day. Then. So let me look at this uh, closer at this watering holes mechanism because i think this is the most interesting it's uh, spear phishing everyone knows how it works right so this is from uh, the kaspersky lab uh, report so for these uh, what is this the watering holes this is uh, a kind of similar to a regular drive by uh, um, the exception is that they are only interested in some victims so for example um, let's say they are interested in some Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 
what would they do? They would compromise some sites that uh, are likely to be visited by, this, by employees of these ministries, so for example, embassies. And this is number one, a guy visits that compromised site, and that site has an iframe, for example, so that will re redirect to this victim or would-be victim to something they call mothership here, but mothership is just a command and control server or something like that. And that mothership will not infect everyone, but will just um, check if they want to infect the victim. It's a simple check by IP address. They maintain a list of interesting IP addresses that and only if the victim source IP is within this list, uh, the infection will be attempted. Then, if it was an interesting uh, victim, uh, in number three, initial backdoor will be installed that Kaspersky calls Epic, but it's also called Tavdik, Whipbot, and stuff like that. And we'll call back to the proxy chain to the mothership. And then uh, these uh, attackers can also connect there because they have a, a web panel there that they can administer this, uh, this um, exploitation framework or this, this is yeah like something like an exploit kit but something you know a little bit different so they collect the victims it's from my vm because yeah they they made a certain mistake and uh it was possible to download uh, this uh, command and control server that's basically i think one of the things that i think it's sloppy and uh, i just installed this php uh, um files on my VM and this is how it looks when it's run. You have basically some uh, uh, collect, they collect uh, versions of uh, Adobe Reader, uh, you know, like plugin, browser plugin, stuff like that. And this, this interesting, interesting IP here, normally the list is here, uh, the ones that uh, the source IP is compared with. Uh, also they have a, they have a web shell there. When you click, it has a different password, that web shell. Uh, and it's a, like, you know, like a web shell. Uh, this is a classic, almost, you know, like a normal functionality for a web shell. But uh, interesting thing is that uh, the, the encoding here is set to Windows 1251. Anyone knows what that encoding is? It's Cyrillic, yes, yes. Uh, so imagine they were successful in compromising that uh, that victim of uh, you know like Ministry of Foreign Affairs or some you know like co company. They will install this initial backdoor that is called Webbot. It can be done via this water holing mechanism or spear phishing. This is a simple backdoor with a handful of just a few commands. Uh, has no code uh, in common with Turla, but uh, when I was analyzing it, uh, there there are two exports, module start and module stop, and this rings a bell when you analyze Turla, you also see those. Yeah, this was uh, obviously not enough to say that it's related, but it is related, yeah. Uh, it's uh, this uh, backdoor and the operation, the whole operation is well described in this report by Kaspersky. Um, some words about this Webbot backdoor, the simple one. Um, I already told you about this kernel mode uh, shell code exploit, uh, privilege escalation exploit. This is interesting. Some interesting and non typical, pro um, um, not protections, but uh, things that uh, make analysis harder are used. Ev ev evasion techniques, I think it's. It's called. Uh, um, the most in, the most interesting is that um, um, they don't use the create uh, the, uh, to to inject code into another process. They don't use write process memory or and then create remote threads. But they use something else. They they map the same section of memory into two processes, and that's that's how they write code into this second process and then they use some trick with said win windows long api call to start the thread in the in the remote process which makes more uh, most of the sun malware sandboxes fooled because they they probably won't uh, follow this uh, this code injection yeah this is standard stuff then they after 
this uh, stage they will uh, try to use uh, yeah, to compromise basically to compromise to get to the domain admin uh, uh, domain admin uh, credentials and they will use another backdoor because this first stage backdoor uh, the command and control IPs and uh, domains are very quickly burned because all these like you know companies the sort of fire eye they will catch these spear phishing emails for example they will have this command and control service so for for them the best is to quickly change it to another backdoor and to use another infrastructure that is not known in this first stage and yeah they will further explore they use a lot of tools you know they will use s things like mimikatz or st stuff like that uh, you know like a standard tools that are used everywhere and this the stage 3 is um is where they decide to install turla so network is fully compromised uh, is uh, deemed interesting to stay longer um uh, they know where to put, um, they know the server infrastructure where to put uh, uh, Turla, the server mode Turla, because I think the PFINet version of Turla is more designed to, to, to sit on workstation and snake on servers, but as I'm, I'm just guessing. And, uh, you know, this stage, whereas the stage 0 to, to 2 might be very quick, like, you know, I don't know, uh, 20 days or something like that, uh, some networks that I know. Uh, uh, compromised by Turla was where they were stayed compromised for uh, like years, yeah, which is scary. So how to detect Turla? But this is not a, a very easy task. I, I have a funny story to tell. I um, we're working on that uh, in 2011 uh, during this uh, on that incident with Snake. Um, uh, the way it was detected was by accident. Um, one of the servers in an organization was blue screening. And uh, the information on the blue screen was uh, the Adaptec Ultra 3 driver was, uh, was, not, uh, was crashing the system. And the blue screen appeared uh, only when the, the, the antivirus uh, was enabled. So the organization conducted the, the antivirus vendor uh, telling them that, yeah, your product is conflicting with uh, uh, with our uh, adapter driver, and they say, mm, they, this, this is really strange, only you have this problem, but don't worry, this is, uh, we have a patch for you. you, your system will be now compatible with your adapter driver, which is kind of scary, because they are just telling them, oh, we, ha we, we made a patch so that rootkit is not, uh, will not cause any problems anymore, I mean, <laughs> so, this is how, really, this is how it was detected, and uh, so the uh, yeah the conclusion uh, from this is that uh, do not only rely on security vendors. Uh, I really would advise that you talk to your partner organization. Uh, uh, you know, establish relationship, uh, share information, IOCs. Um, um, IOCs uh, sometimes are not enough because they might use infrastructure per victim. A specific one per victim so if you share it to another victim it doesn't give you anything but often it's uh, cross related so it's still good to to do that uh, good yara signatures custom detection tools and it's 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 really important to it, it, it's uh, I, I need to stress this out these third party suppliers this is this is the infection vector that is uh, Really, more and more common. Like I said, these uh, smaller organizations don't have uh, so much money to to protect themselves. But uh, the bigger ones, they trust them, and this is how they can hope to there. So, I'm not. I cannot propose any solution, of course. But uh, this, this, I, I'm just, uh, you know, like posing a problem. Yeah, divagations on attribution. Yeah, this is. This was well documented in all these reports uh, publicly so I don't probably need to show that but there are some there are like you know like few of uh, these indications and when you take it together you can you can you know have a good guess how uh, what what who can be uh, behind this attack any anyone knows what Zagruszczyk is there's a cool word I think Z Okay, uh, someone else? Yes, 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 close. Bootloader? 
yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you have um, several of these like indicators that you can pull together and uh, you know have a good guess. I leave you with this. Any questions? Do we have time? We have time for uh, two or three yes. questions. How to detect, uh, how to detect uh, such a rootkit using typical network uh, network discovery tools? How to how to detect uh, this kind of rootkit via network traffic? Um, to to well, to create a generic detection, uh, so not the detection based on IPs on command and control server. Uh, the snake version of the of the toolkit is difficult to detect. You would have to have, a, I think, a, a suricata with some good Lua signatures to detect this. Some of the traffic can be detected. Some of the uh, the datagram channels uh, that they can use can be detected, and there are some signatures in our report that we published. Uh, if you compare the, the regular traffic after infection with the pattern that was before infection, will it get any clue? Uh, I mean something you like... You can uh, look for anomalies, yes, yes, but that's uh, time-consuming con time and... Uh, you could probably, probably look uh, uh, for this SMTP uh, traffic and, uh, you know, like pick like suspicious 10 characters, usernames, maybe. And what about uh, comparing incoming connections from logs from firewall to the logs that come to the SMTP uh, or uh, or it's a simply exchange server? Because uh, if Turla takes over that connection, that's why what, what yes. I discovered from your from your presentation, yes. it takes over the whole connection. So this connection yeah. will not happen in the log of exchange no. uh, server. No. So if you con if you compare the network traffic from firewall with the logs from exchange server, that connection will not be logged. Yes, actually a very good idea. Uh, this is this is one detection method that can be really useful also in the HTTP. Uh, one email for a few thousand per day. Uh, yes, yes, that's true. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it's it's not easy, but uh, I think it's 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 a uh, it's a method that can be explored further, and uh, I think so. Any other questions? Okay, if there is no questions, I'm sure that Mr. Daszowski would answer your questions after the presentation. Now, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Thank you, Jenki.